I don't know if you can hear that wind tunnel sound behind me. I gotta figure out why her bands won't work right. This is the Philips X Brilliance monitor. It's a 34 inch monitor that's PVA, SPVA panel. This was the contender replacement that we had in mind for the HP Omen X35. I decided I definitely wanted to take a look at it because back when I was looking anyways, this one totally went under my radar and I wanna show it. I know I'm probably a little late to the game with this one and I'm sure there's other videos out there about it, but I wanna show this one to you guys and uh, I think that it's probably one of the best options out there for the price because especially one of the things that I need to note about it is it's mismarketed by Philips. They, they, they listed saying that it only goes up to 60 hertz but the thing about SVA panels SVA is actually capable of 100 hertz which makes this more than adequate now it's not G-Sync it's FreeSync it's about the $730 difference of a $1300 monitor for this around $560 to $590 so yeah let's break it down a little bit look at a couple tests do a few things with it and uh, see what you guys think I like it a lot one of the first things we might notice is actually going to be that base the base is a lot bigger than it looks even in this video right here it's a pretty decent size and has a big footprint for the desk now it does a great job at stabilizing the monitor. It is a metal construction base. It's almost like a shiny, not brushed metal base too. So it's it's pretty fingerprint friendly. I mean, you, you'll, you'll touch it, you'll leave your fingerprints all over it. But this base goes back a pretty decent bit. You can probably see that it's slightly overhanging the desk back there, but all the weight is actually in the front on the vase amount, which I'll show you in just a moment. Looking back here behind the monitor, you can see that it has a very height friendly adjustable lift and it goes up pretty tall. So when it's adjustable stand at its max height, you can see it can be very tall. I like that a lot because if you're somebody that works at a standing station and you want just that little extra height, especially if you're a taller person, this will work out great for you. I mean, that thing, that thing gets tall. Let me show you again now at its lowest height and then put it back at its highest height again. So right there's our resting height, usually where it sits when we're playing a game or something. That's how she likes it. But if she wanted to bring it up tall, she can do that. And you know that base may not be the prettiest base in the world, but it really does prevent a lot of weeble wobble from it, because it don't fall down. On top of it just getting tall, it's actually very sturdy on there too, where I had issues with things like the Omen wanting to stay in one spot, that one will definitely stay in one spot, and I like that a lot. Finding your perfect height is really easy with this one. I am all for companies wanting to show off their branding, but that right there, that big Phillips thing that looks like a tag that belongs on a plushie hanging down that lights up, I could have done without that. That's one of the things I don't like on this monitor. Just too much overkill. You don't need this big useless piece of plastic here. The bezel looks great. I think all the way around it comes almost all the way to the edge and that's about as much as you can ask for. It looks really good. You got that little black border there but that's about it and it goes around the top as well. One of the things I like about any kind of VA panel is the viewing angles are always really good and they're very reminiscent of an IPS panel to me. TN panels are obviously one of the best for gaming. This is not made necessarily for gaming but we've seen a lot of gaming monitors come out with VA panels. On the back of the monitor it comes fully loaded with some of the features that we want. You've got four USB 3.0 ports. All you'll need to do is plug in your big hub connector and plug it into the back of the PC, preferably in something that's 3.0 or 3.1 on the back of the PC so the hub is getting as much as it needs. Directly to the side of the hub plug, you'll see your HDMI input here. You can plug in HDMI on this monitor as well, which is pretty cool, but I imagine most of us are going to be using DisplayPort because we want to use that 100 hertz. On this side, we have our second HDMI port, our DisplayPort, an audio in port, an audio out port for your headset. There are two 5 watt speakers inside of this monitor. You also have the power connection plug, your DC vault in from the power brick that you plug into the wall to, of course, power the monitor. If I didn't mention over here, your third USB in the back here from the left side, if you count one, two, that third one right there is actually going to be a passive charge USB. What does that mean? It has a lightning bolt. What does the lightning bolt mean on a USB when you see that? It means that anything that's plugged into it, whether the PC is on or the monitor is on, is going to receive a passive charge. So if you're trying to charge your phone or you wanted to plug an iPhone cable into that or an Android phone cable into that, uh, likewise, if you have a light that you want always lit, like a little desk lamp that's USB powered, you can plug into that and whether your PC or monitor is on or off it should give it passive power so that it will always be drawing power from the outlet the wall or the PC that it's plugged into now when we received this monitor we didn't get any extra VESA backplate mounting or anything like that but it simply has a release button under here if you push that release button down and pull the monitor away from the stand the monitor will come detached from the stand opening up this whole square area for VESA mounting there are four screws behind this plastic piece right here that imagine you just remove and then use those to mount onto whatever VESA backing you put it on the monitor has a wide range of tilt as I'm about to show you here. You get about 10 to 15 degrees down, 10 to 15 degrees up. 
should be more than adequate for what most people need. While the screen still appears to be a generously nice size, the monitor's bezel is very thin. You may also notice the curve in it. This is an 1800R curve on this monitor. And if you're somebody that doesn't like a flat screen display, this might be the one for you. Now I can record a black cross chest all day, but you're only going to see the blacks as well as your own display will let you. So I'm going to take a picture of it as well so you can see exactly what I'm able to see on this monitor in this test. I can easily identify every square on the black crush test. I can easily identify square number one. And I'll show you that here in the slightly exposed picture so that you have the idea that the monitor is able to pick this up and display it back to me. Similar to our black crush test, this is only going to show you about as good as you can see on your own monitor. So what I'm going to end up doing is taking this and taking pictures of it so you can see the actual ghosting effect. Now we've got one line running at 100 frames per second, one line running at 50 frames per second. The 50 frames per second does a lot better than 100 frames per second, even though we're set at 100 hertz. Philips seems to have borrowed an idea from LG, which I like actually, because I like single button controls on monitors, on projectors, on TVs. I think it makes sense. It's essentially a little analog stick right here that goes in four different directions. You hold it down to power it on, and then you can move it around. Moving it up opens one menu. Moving it left opens one menu. Moving it right opens one menu. Moving it down opens one menu. Let's stop here and do a really quick tour of the on-screen display. I'll go over a little bit of the menu and how it works. If we press to the right, we bring up a screen that has a bunch of presets in it, like FPS, first person, and it changes the monitor as you go through them. Gamer 1, Gamer 2, and low blue mode to help save your eyes from certain eye death over time. If you go to the right, you got things where you can set your low blue mode, change your inputs, which is also interesting that there's an HDMI 2.0 as one of those HDMI ports on the back. Pretty impressive. You also have your display port. You can change things in pictures, such as brightness, contrast, sharpness, all this good stuff. You have complete control over how you want to do this, including even your response time. I set mine to fastest, which is probably why we have a little bit of overscan and our UFO testing. Smart size tells you a little bit about the panel size. It's a 34 inch wide, 21 9 aspect ratio. Pip screens. The pip screens are pretty cool. That's picture in picture mode. So if you have a TV or something plugged into the back of one of those other ports, you can turn it on and stream it in one of the corners here on the monitor. You can also use audio. If I didn't mention there are two 5 watt speakers in this, they're pretty neat, but no one's really probably going to use those. However, I shouldn't say that because I'm sure somebody would find that and be advantageous of it. You can change your color temperature. It's set to 6500K. This is most closely related to sunlight bright whiteness. You can also change to an sRGB setup. Languages, of course. If you speak a different language, you may not want English. You can change your on-screen display settings. And in setup, you can see things like the power LED, which lights up that bright Philips tab thing at the bottom. Going up will open up the multi-view mode, which will let you do your PIP screens. Going down lets you check out your audio sources. Audio in, HDMI 1.4, HDMI 2.0, and display port. That's pretty much it for the on-screen display. Here's the thing about gaming and overscan too. I wanted to touch on this real quick because with most panels I've noticed, including the HP Omen X35, that while it is a gaming monitor, this maybe not so much marketed as a gaming monitor, is quite capable of the gaming love that I got from the HP Omen X35. So you'll see a lot of overscan or blur or motion blur, and a lot of this is the combination of your in-game settings, but not only your in-game settings, but the actual monitor settings. So if you're seeing a lot of blur when you're playing the game, like I show in some of these pictures here, just make sure that you're trying to adjust it from your, your speeds from fastest, maybe bring it down, make it a little bit slower, and make sure your in-game settings are set to have things like motion blur off so that you can get a good idea of just how good of a refresh rate you're getting out of that 100 hertz when you're playing a game. Modifying the settings will help you a lot. This monitor is 3440 by 1440p. It's capable of up to 100 hertz utilizing a Samsung SVA panel. It's 4 milliseconds of gray to gray. It's height adjustable. Brightness is 300 nits. It's an 1800R curved monitor, which is a nice curved monitor without being too overly accentuated in its curve. We have HDMI my 2.0, HDMI 1.4, and a display port out on the back. Four USB 3.0s, one of which is a passive charge, and two 5 watt speakers. If there's anything else I didn't cover or say right here that you wanted to know about it specifically, post down below. Have a great day, night, whatever it is. I'll see you guys in the next video I do. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Be sure and post down below. I'll make sure to try to get back with you. Be sure to get subscribed if you want more updates or to watch more videos of anything that I will review. Have a great day, night, whatever it is.